Hi, and welcome back. Today we're going to look at section 5.3, which is on the differentiation of logarithmic functions. So in today's lesson, we're going to learn the rules for finding the derivative of logarithms. And then by doing that, we can expand our knowledge of analyzing some more real world applications where the logarithmic function is part of the equation. So today we're going to just learn the differentiation rules for logarithmic functions. And so for our concepts and definitions today, we just basically have two rules for both natural logs and logs. But really, once we look at them, hopefully you'll see they're very similar to one another. <clears throat> so we're going to start with the derivative of natural logs. Natural logs probably exist more in our real life applications than regular logarithms, but we do see both of these when we're doing <clears throat> certain applications. Okay, so we're going to start with natural log, which remember is just a log with base e. Okay, that's what a natural log is. So if you're looking to find the derivative of a natural log of any other function, so notice in the parentheses after the natural log will be another function, then the derivative of this function will be 1 over whatever the function is, okay, the plain function in the bottom, times the derivative of what's in the inside. So if we put that together, what most of you guys do, this is a little bit easier to remember, you put the derivative of g of x on the top, and on the bottom is g of x. That's the exact same thing here, so it's a little bit easier to do it this way. Okay, so if you have the natural log of a function, the derivative would be the derivative of g of x in the numerator over g of x in the bottom. Okay, it's pretty straightforward, so you just got to remember this new rule. And then if you have just the natural log of x, so if what's inside or right after the natural log is just x, then the derivative is simply just 1 over x. Okay. It's pretty much the same as this if you look at it, because what is the derivative of x on the top? That would be 1, right? And then that's the function on the bottom. So it follows the same rule as this. It's just a little bit easier to remember. That is always the derivative of the natural log of x. All right, then we look at the derivatives of any other logarithmic function. So a log of any other base besides base e. <clears throat> so same exact function g of x is in the middle, but we're doing the g of x, we're taking the log of something different, not the natural log, okay? So only difference, if you look at this right here, this is exactly what we started with, right? So if we look at this, it's exactly what we did. The only difference is that once you write that derivative, you're also going to add to the denominator the natural log of whatever the base is. So I'm going to rewrite this so that it looks similar to this. You're still going to do the derivative of g of x on the top. You're still going to do g of x on the bottom. Okay, so exactly like that. But if it's any other kind of log, then you have to multiply g of x times the natural log of whatever the base is. So we'll do those in just a little bit so you can see that. So I like to kind of make it look just like this first one so that you can see it's very similar. It's just remember, if you're taking the log of anything other than the natural log, you have to tack on this natural log of the base in the denominator for your answer. Same thing for log base b of just x. So just like this one, it's 1 over x, but then you're going to add the natural log of b in the bottom. So this is going to end up being x times the natural log of whatever the base is. Okay, so see the similarities, pretty much the same thing. You just got to remember to tack that into the bottom. Okay, all right, so let's look at a couple of these and get going on practicing these derivatives. So keep this page handy. I'll keep coming back to it for a while, but this is what we need to do our derivatives. All right, so starting with number one on this first page, we're just going to find the derivatives of each of these expressions. Each of these expressions are natural logs. So we're just going to be dealing with these first two derivatives, okay? Either g prime of x over g of x or 1 over x if it's just natural log. So it really makes up whatever's in these parentheses, okay? That's your function g of x, whatever's after the natural log. Okay, so for part A, if we're doing the derivative of y, we call that y prime. 
So this is a natural log. So this is the derivative of the function in the middle. So that's 3. That goes in the numerator. And then over whatever the function is in the bottom. Okay? Now, you can reduce that to 1 over x. That would be fine, but we're just going to leave it right now. Okay? But you could reduce that because that's multiplication. That would be 1 over x. All right, for part b, derivative of y. This time the function in the parentheses is x cubed. So in the numerator will be the derivative of that. Well, the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared over... And then always in the bottom, you put the function itself, x cubed. Okay. So again, if you wanted to simplify this, you could reduce this down to 3 over x. Okay, I'll write that here. Reduces to 3 over x. Right. So we could reduce the x's. This one, I'll write, reduces to 1 over x. So if in Hawks you're looking for a multiple choice answer where you have to reduce it, then this is what would be our answer. But for me, if I just ask you to write that down, then that's fine. We're just going to leave it. We don't have to reduce it unless we're going to use it. All right, now for part C, we have a constant out front. But remember, the constant is part of the function. Okay, so that's going to be part of the numerator. Don't lose that. So... But after that, remember, what is, the natural, what is the derivative of just natural log? Well, that's 1 over x. So you multiply that times the constant. So you're going to do 5 times 1 over x. That's the derivative of ln. So that's just 5 over x. Okay, this is not a... You could treat it as multiplication, but it's not really when you have a constant. Okay? It's just the constant stays there. It's just like, you know, when you have 5x squared, right? You multiply this derivative times that. So 5 times 2, that gave you the 10. Okay, well, here the derivative is just 1 over x. So we're still going to use that constant in there, okay? All right, part D. Now we've got f of x, so we'll call this derivative f prime. Okay, again, constant is going to stay in the problem. And then what is the derivative of the natural log of 3x squared? Okay. So again, this is going to go in the numerator, the derivative of that. So the derivative of 3x squared is 6x. The function goes in the bottom. Okay. So if we want to clean that up, 2 times 6 is 12x over 3x squared. And then that will reduce. Okay, 12 divided by 3 would be 4, and then we could take 1x out of both the top and the bottom. So that would be its reduced form. Okay, so it's good to be able to reduce. Again, if you, you know, we need it to work out any problems, or if you're looking for answers on Hawks, where they're multiple choice, you have to be able to do that. <clears throat> All right, now, for part E, we've got a chain rule going on in here. So let's look at that. So the derivative, when you have a constant, that stays in the answer. Now, let's look at this, okay? We need to do the derivative of the inside on the top. Well, the derivative of the inside is a chain rule. So what is the derivative of 3x squared? We're going to bring the 2 out front, leave the inside alone, subtract 1 from the exponent, and then multiply this times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of 3x is just 3. So that's a chain rule on the top. Now, on the denominator, it goes to be the function. So the function is that. Okay? All right, so let's see about reducing this guy. So this, if I multiply everything in the top, 2 times 2 times 3 times 3, that's 9 times 4. So in the top, we've got 36x. And in the bottom, if I square this, if I wanted to reduce it, if I square 3x, that would be 9x squared. So I could reduce that. 36 divided by 9 is 4 in the top. And again, one of these x's will cancel in the top and the bottom. So I could reduce that to 4 over x. This is fine. This is fine, okay? But in Hawks, if they want you to reduce, that is what you would put. 
All right, number five. Okay, five is the constant. It's going to stay in there. And now we're going to do our fraction. In the top goes the derivative of what's in here. So that's just a polynomial. So the derivative of this is 6x. Derivative of that is 0. So in the top, we've got 6x. In the bottom, you're putting the function. Okay? All right. So if we wanted to reduce that, 5 times 6, we got 30x in the top over 3x squared minus 2 in the bottom. That cannot be simplified, so that would be your answer. Okay? All right. Part G. Now we've got a polynomial, sort of, not really a polynomial because we've got the natural log, but we have individual terms being added and subtracted. So we're just going to be using the power rule for this, power rule for this, and then our rule for natural log here. I am going to, however, rewrite this so when we do our power rule, we'll know what to do over here on the last term. So instead of writing minus 5 over x, I'm going to write minus 5x to the negative 1, right? That goes in the numerator, so we can do the power rule. I don't want to do a quotient rule here if I don't have to. That's easier. All right, so what is the derivative of function f? We'll start with 17x squared. The derivative of that is 34x. This is a natural log, so the derivative is going to be a fraction. Remember, in the numerator is the derivative of the inside, 3x squared, and the bottom is whatever the function is. And then the, another power rule here, so negative 1 times negative 5 is positive 5. Subtract 1 from your exponent. All right, so again, that's fine. If we wanted to clean that up a little bit, we would say 34x. Here we could cancel out an x squared in the top and x squared in the bottom. That would leave you with 3 over x. And this is 5 over x squared. If we don't want to write any negative exponents, we could bring that back to the bottom. Both of these are the same. Okay? So get familiar with reducing, because that is going to be probably important now, because a lot of these that just have the variable x in them, you can always reduce those. Okay? All right. Okay. Now, in H, I see that I don't just have a constant out front. I have a, another function, 21x squared times the natural log of x to the 4. So this is definitely a product rule. I have to take this function, 21x squared, that's the first function, times the natural log of x to the 4th, that's the other function. So we're going to use the product rule here. Okay, that's a product. When you just have a constant out front, like the ones we were doing earlier, that's not a product rule. If it's just 21, then no. But since I, I got a variable here, that now becomes a product rule. Okay, so let's do our product rule. Okay? All right, so remember our product rule says take the first times the derivative of the second. So we're going to take the first function, 21x squared, times the derivative of the natural log of x to the fourth. So the derivative of that is our fraction with the derivative of x to the fourth on the top, that's 4x cubed, over the function in the bottom, x to the fourth. Plus, okay, now we're going to take the second function, natural log of x to the fourth, times the derivative of the first. Well, the derivative of 21x squared is 42x, right? All right, so that's the product rule. That is how we would leave it if we just wanted to show that we know the product rule. Now, if I wanted to clean it up a little bit, we've got a lot of x's here, so let's see what we got. So 21 times 4, that would be 84x to the fifth in the top over x to the fourth in the bottom. And here, you can't combine this. When it's a natural log, that's its own separate thing. So all I can do... If I wanted to, is write that out front. 42x natural log of x to the fourth. Don't make that x to the fifth. You can't, you can't break up a natural log. Okay? Here, there were no natural logs, so I was okay. And then right here, you can simplify that a little bit more. You can divide x to the fourth up here. So those will cancel, leave you one in the top. So 84x plus 42x natural log of x to the fourth. 
That would be as far as I would take that. Okay. You could factor out a 42x, but that's getting a little more crazy, so let's just leave it at that for now. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, num or number part I is another product rule. So find your two pieces. So you got one function, 18 squared of x, that's the function, times, and then the natural log of 5 minus 11 x squared is your second function. So this again is a product rule. Okay. All right, so let's do the product rule again here. We're going to take the first function, 18 squared of x, times the derivative of the natural log function. So remember, we got the derivative of the inside goes in the numerator. So the derivative of 5 is 0. The derivative of negative 11x squared would be negative 22x. And then in the bottom, you just put the function. Okay, so there's the derivative of that. Plus the second function, which is the natural log of 5 minus 11x squared. Okay, times the derivative of this. So remember, 18 square root of x is 18x to the 1 half, right? That's 18 square root of x is x to the 1 half. So it might be easier for you to do the derivative this way. So 1 half times 18 is 9, and then subtract 1 from 1 half, you get negative 1 half. Okay, so this is 9 over the square root of x when we simplify it in a minute. Okay, so it doesn't look like a lot of simplifying. You can just get rid of these parentheses here. This is in the numerator, and so is that. So that would be negative. We can multiply 18 times 22. What is that? 18 times 22 is 396. So negative 396. This is x to the 1 half, and this is x to the 1st. So if I add those together in the numerator, that's x to the 3 halves. And then in the bottom, we just have that. Now, you know, are most of you going to do that? Probably not, but that is how you would do that, right? You add your exponents for the variables. So 1 half and 1 is 3 halves. Multiply the numbers. So that is that simplified version. Over here... 9 is in the top, this is in the top, but the x to the negative 1 half can go to the bottom. So we have 9 natural log of 5 minus 11x squared over square root of x. Okay? Now you could write this as the square root of x cubed. That's fine, but you can leave it like that. This is fine if we're just showing that we know the rule. Okay? All right. Okay. Ooh, this one looks fun. Okay, so let's see. What do we have here? If I'm looking at this and reading it, I've got the natural log of this whole thing. So this is a natural log problem. So when it's a natural log problem, we've got to do the derivative of the inside. That goes in the numerator over this whole thing in the denominator. Well, if you look at the inside, that's a product, this times this. So we're going to do the natural log and then the product rule when we do the numerator. So the derivative of any natural log, because that's, that's the outer function, is going to be that fraction, right? And what goes in the top is the derivative of the inside. Well, this happens to be a product. I don't want to multiply it out. That's too much trouble. So let's just do the product rule here. So the derivative of the inside goes in the top. So we're going to start with the first times the derivative of the second. So we've got 12x squared minus 20 to the fifth times the derivative of this. Okay, the derivative of that is 50x minus 2. All right, then plus... Now I'm going to do the last times the derivative of the first. So 25x squared minus 2x, that's the last, now times the derivative of this. Well, this is a chain rule. So we're going to do the outer function first. So 5, leave this alone, 
to the fourth power, right? Five of these to the fourth power. Then times the derivative of the inside, which would be 24x. All right, so that's the big principles. Okay, so the, first, the second function, and then all of this is the derivative of this. We did five of these to the fourth power. Don't change the middle. And then you multiply by the derivative of the middle, which is 24x. All over, for natural log, remember, it's just this goes in the box. That's the function in the box. So 12x squared minus 20 to the fifth times 25x squared minus 2x. And we're just going to leave that alone. We could try to simplify all that, but there's right now we don't need to really do that. So we're just showing that we understand the rule. And that is the rule. Okay. Derivative of what's in the parentheses on the top, and then the function goes in the bottom, which is that's the rule for natural log. All right, let's look at part K. This is a division problem, so quotient rule involved here. Okay, quotient rule. All right, so for the quotient rule, remember we start with the bottom times the derivative of the top. Okay, so the bottom times the derivative, that's the bottom, now times the derivative of the top would be 4x, 4x minus, okay, and now we're going to do the top times the derivative of the bottom. So the top times the derivative of a natural log, it's going to be a fraction, which is what goes in the top, the derivative, 5x to the fourth, and what goes in the bottom, the function, okay, all over the bottom squared. So all over this squared. Okay, so again, you could leave it like that. Or we could simplify this a little bit, okay? This doesn't really need to be simplified. You could write it like this. That's all you can do to that. This, however, we could write 5 times 2 is 10, and then you have x to the 6th in the top and x to the 5th in the bottom. So x to the 6th over x to the 5th would just give you x in the top over that. And that's about all you can do with that one. Okay, so just over here, this would be 10x to the 6th over x to the 5th, because this is in the numerator. And then I just reduce this to get the x. So if you're wondering where that came from. Okay. All right. So there's our derivatives of natural logs. All right, now on this page, we're going to do the derivatives of the other ones. So let's look at those. Okay, so the other log, so let's back up to the first page. So remember when we're doing other logs that are not natural logs, same rule, except we're going to tack on that natural log of the base in each denominator. Okay, that's the only difference. Okay, so for part A, this is log base 3. So that's your base, 3. So we would do still the derivative of what's in here on the top, 8x. The function goes in the bottom, just like always, except because it's not a natural log, we're going to tack on times the natural log of 3. Okay, That's the only difference. So just don't forget to do that when you have other logs. All right, for part B, this is a quotient rule. Okay, quotient rule. So we're going to start with the bottom times the derivative of the top. So there's the bottom. All right, the derivative of just x, remember, is 1 over x. But since it's not a natural log, we're going to tack on the natural log of the base in the bottom. Okay, so anytime there's just an x there, the derivative was 1 over x. But because it's not a log, natural log, we're going to do the natural log of the base. All right, so that's the derivative of the top, minus, and then we've got the top, which is that, times the derivative of the bottom, 4x cubed. 
all over the bottom square. So you could write x to the 8th, that's fine. Okay? All right. If we wanted to clean that up, okay, let's, let's practice this one on cleaning up with the x's. This is a good one because it's got a lot of x's in it. All right, so first off, this is in the numerator. So we got x to the fourth over x natural log of 6 minus, this is all in the top, but you can't multiply that x. Remember, log x's are separate. So this is just 4x cubed times log base 6 of x. That's in the top. And that whole thing is over x to the 8th. Okay? So here you could reduce that to x to the third if you wanted to. Okay? You could reduce this to x to the third. So that depends again if you're going to use it or not. All right. On part C, okay? It's again, we got the cube root of x function and then the log function. So this is a product. We get the first function, second function. So we got to do a product rule. All right, so we do the product rule. We're going to start with the first function, which is the cube root of x times the derivative of this. So again, derivative of any log. Take the derivative of the inside that goes on the top, 5x to the fourth over the function in the bottom. But since it's not a natural log, we're going to times this by the natural log of that base. Okay, so that's the derivative of that. Plus, <clears throat> and then we're going to take the second function, log base 7 of x to the fifth, times the derivative of cube root of x. So remember, the cube root of x is x to the one third. So the derivative of this would be one-third x to the negative two-thirds. Subtract so one from one-third, you get negative two-thirds. And we're just going to leave that one alone. <laughs> There's too many different things in there. That's fine. You could put this up in the numerator, cube root of x times that. But that's okay. Well, we're just going to leave that one alone. All right. Now, we're going to get into a couple applications, so let's see what these say. Most of this, again, is just same applications you've been doing, but now these functions are going to have logarithms in them. So number three says, a company has determined that a profit from the sale of X chairs is given by this function, P of X equals 58X plus the natural log of 5X to the fourth plus $17. Find the marginal profit, just the function. Okay, well, the marginal profit function, remember, is just the derivative of the profit. So that's all it's asking you to do is find the derivative function. <clears throat> so it's just putting it into words what we just got through doing. So this is linear, so we're going to take the derivative of 58x, which is 58, plus then we have a natural log. So that's a fraction. Derivative of the inside goes on the numerator, so that would be 20x to the third. And then the function goes in the bottom. Okay, so there's your derivative function. Marginal profit function. All right, number four. Find the absolute extrema for this function, natural log function, on this interval. So remember to find the extrema, we have to find the function values here and then the function values of any critical value. So we have to find the critical values of this, which means we need the derivative. So let's start with the derivative of the natural log function. We're going to get a fraction. We're going to take the derivative of this goes in the numerator. So that would be 18x minus 7. That's the numerator, right, the derivative. And then the bottom, we've got the function. Okay? All right, so there's the derivative function. So now we're going to find the critical values, which is to take this, set it equal to 0. Okay? 
So remember, the nice part about this is when you set a fraction equal to 0 and cross multiply, this goes away. Because 9x squared minus 7x minus 10 times 0 is 0. So we're just left with 18x minus 7 equals 0. 18x equals 7. When you move the 7 over and you divide by 18, we get 7 over 18. All right, so the extrema then, we have to find f of the endpoints, remember, 11.6. We have to find f of 13.4. And we have to find f of 7 18 our critical value. Okay? Okay, so you're, the only place you can have absolute extremes are either at the endpoints or at the critical values. Now, I need to put those numbers into this function. So I'm going to use my calculator and go to the table to do that. So I don't want to do, well, can't really do that in my head, not with natural logs. So remember how to do this. We're going to go to y equals, and we're going to put this in y equals. So the natural log of 9x squared minus 7x minus 10. Close your parentheses and hit enter. All right, now, since these are decimals and fractions, we're going to have to ask, the, we're going to put these in ourselves. So again, I'm not sure where your calculator left off. So we need to change our table set. So do second window. And make sure your independent variable is on ask. So if it's not, like mine was not, Go down to the ask, hit enter, and that should change it to ask. So that's what you want. Doesn't matter what this is. This just should be on ask. This should be on auto. So now when we go to our table, second graph, if you have any values in there, just delete them. Okay, just hit delete until everything's gone. And then we're just going to put in these numbers. 11.6, enter. 13.4, enter, 7 divided by 18. Put it in just like that. It'll change it to a decimal for you. Okay? Hmm. I'm just looking at why that's an error. Next. Okay. It's just not in part of the domain, I guess. So, okay. Well, or it's not in there. All right. So, did I put seven? I just want to make sure. Now I'm questioning myself. I think I did. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, 11.6, we had 7.0209. 13.4, we had 7.3213. And this critical value. Gave us an error, so it's not in this function range, so that's fine. Okay, so this is obviously the min, and this is the max in that interval. So this is our absolute min, because it's the smallest number, and this would be your absolute max. Okay. All right, so just remember, when you're doing the extrema, the derivative, we need the critical numbers. And then all you have to test are the endpoints and the critical numbers, but make sure you test them in here, not in here, okay? That's not what you're testing. You're testing f of the function. Okay, so there's our min and max. Happen to be both endpoints. No value for the critical number. All right, <laughs> last problem. Number five, aphids are discovered in a banana orchard. The Department of Agriculture has determined that the population of aphids T hours after the orchard has been sprayed is approximated by this function, okay, where T has to be between 0 and 100. So those are our endpoints. What is the maximum number of aphids in the banana orchard? So this is just like what we did. did we just did. We have to look at plugging 0 in here, plugging 100 in here, and then any critical numbers, okay? So we are looking for only, though, the maximum of those numbers. So we, same thing, we've got to find the derivative because we need critical numbers. Those are also some test points. So this is just telling you that's your interval from 0 to 100, okay? Just like on the last problem. 
So we're going to have to test those numbers in just a second. But let's first do the derivative. So this is a product, 4t, well, let's start here. The derivative of 1800 is 0, so that's why I'm skipping that. No derivative there. Next is a product rule, but be careful because it's negative 4t times the natural log. Then we got to do the derivative of that last little guy, which is minus 1. So we're going to start, I'll put 0 here just so we can catch all the terms. So there's the derivative of that. Now, we're going to do a product rule. So I'm going to treat that negative as with the 4, okay? So when you do the product rule, we start with the first function, so negative 4t times the derivative of the second. So this is a natural log. So the derivative of this would be the derivative of 0.13t in the top, so that's just 0.13, over 0.13t in the bottom, the function. Okay, plus, so this is all the derivative of this middle term right here. So plus the second function, natural log of 0.13t, times the derivative of the first function. The derivative of negative 4t is negative 4. Okay, so that's all the derivative of this. Now we need the derivative of minus t, which is minus 1. All right, so we do want to simplify this just a bit since we are going to use it. So let's just look at that. So the derivative of 1800 was 0. The derivative of this is right here. We've got the first function times the derivative of the second plus the second function times the derivative of the first. So that's all the derivative of that middle part and then the derivative of minus t is minus 1. So, to clean this up, this t will cancel with this t, okay? You got a negative, oh, and these will cancel. So, all you're left with right here is negative 4, okay? Now, make sure you see that. This t cancels with that. These cancel. So, all you have is negative 4. Here, I'm just going to bring that negative 4 out front. Negative 4, natural log of that. Can't really do much else to that. And then we have the minus 1. So we can combine that minus 4 and minus 1 to minus 5. So this is much easier to set equal to 0 and solve. Okay? So I just did minus 1, minus 4 right here. Okay, so this is our derivative, so we're going to take the derivative and set it equal to zero to find our critical values. Okay. All right, so we're going to move the negative 5 over to this side. It becomes positive 5. Now we're going to divide everything by negative 4. Divide everything by negative 4. 5 divided by negative 4 is 1 and 1 fourth, so that's 1.25. It's just right as a decimal because everything's going to be decimals. So I just did 5 divided by negative 4. Okay, on this side, 5 divided by negative 4 is that. All right, now we've got to get rid of natural log. So we're going to write this in exponential form. So the base is e. So e to the negative 1.25 equals the answer, okay, and then we're going to divide both sides by 0.13. So e to the negative 1.5 divided by 0.13 is t. So now we just got to put that in our calculator. Okay, so e to the negative 1.25 is that. And then divide it by 0.13. So 2.2039, we'll call it 2.2039. I just rounded 2.2039. Okay. All right. And that happens to be in our range, remember, between 0 and 100. So we have to look at n of 0, n of 100 and n of 2.2039. We want to find the max. OK. 
right? So that's what we got to do. Find the endpoints, find our critical number value of this function. So again, I'm going to put that function in my calculator because it's got natural logs in it. We can't do those in our head. So we're going to put the function in 1800 minus, and instead of T, I'm going to use X's. So 4X natural log 0.13X, close my parentheses, minus X, enter. Okay. All right. So there's my function, and now I'm going to go to my table, hit delete, get rid of those old numbers we had in there, and now we're going to put in these numbers. 0, 100, 2.2039. All right, so 0 gave us an error, so that's not it. 100 is 674.82. But our critical number gave us 1,808.8. .8. So out of those, we want the maximum. So it is right here. So that's our max. That's the maximum number of aphids. Okay, in this banana orchard. All right, so you can see the process is the same. Okay. What happens to just be different is now our functions are becoming a little bit tricky because we have logarithms, but we have our calculator, so that's why it's real important to make sure you have the calculator and know how to use it. Okay. All right, so hopefully you get to work on section 5.3. If you need help, please let me know. Um, if you need help with your calculator, the MLC would be a great place to go. They can help you with that as well. Um, I'm here if you need me, so just let me know. All right, I'll see you back here next time.